We continue our Game 2 news conference with representatives from Tennessee. Joining us left to right, head coach Tony Vitello and student athletes Blade Tidwell and Charlie Taylor. Coach will make an opening statement and then we will go into questions for all three. Please raise your hand and we will call on you. Coach? Yeah, I don't have anything super organized, just who we just followed. Um, it's a good team. It's a really good team. They, they play the way we want our guys to play. Loose, uh, play hard, have fun, play together. Uh, and then clearly they have some talent as well. Uh, I think it speaks volumes to how Blade threw the ball. Um, I mean, you could have watched it and seen it, but also if you know their lineup well, uh, I, I think the results kind of applaud it as well. Um, so it's good for you. I mean, people around here are starting to become really good baseball fans. You can hear it in the stands with things they say and things they do. And uh, last year was quite the game uh, to start off our regional. Uh, but now I think people realize, including our team, you're going to play a good team no matter who you play in the NCAA tournament. And it's good for you to get challenged right out of the gate. And I realize the score doesn't dictate it that as much. But you ask our guys, they were challenged. Um, and then, you, you know, obviously Charlie's up here. Um, uh, we'll give it some time to figure out what's going on. Cause I got to get with doc clink, but obviously, uh, Evan Russell was not here. He was sick this morning. I got a message from him. Um, I'm going to always defer to those folks. So don't think I'm a bad guy. If a guy sprains an ankle and I'm not out on the field, I, I wouldn't, I don't know what to do. I would just get in Woody's way and, and same thing with doc. So, um, it opened up an opportunity, uh, for Charlie and also our guys to kind of rally around one another, because, uh, clearly that's a big piece there. Um, and I, I think for me, the one thing I'll say about it to finish is Char if you come to practice, I mean, I'm looking at these names. I think Charlie's got everyone on our roster beat as far as how he shows up and plays ball and does all of this. It's just kind of the same deal. It's, it's why he's a fan favorite in the locker room. So I don't think it affects him much, but what our fans do just in certain situations and in particular, uh, being behind our guy. Um, that, that's a freshman on the field does things to my soul that I wish I could explain to y'all, but I can't. So, questions. We'll start with Ben in the front. Tony, do you expect Evan back tomorrow? I I, I don't know. I, I would say if you know he he wasn't able to be here today, then I, I wouldn't think quick turnaround. I mean, I even handle that stuff with my guys uh, or our guys, I should say. Um, you know, in the fall, you're you're out one day. You got to come to me first before we'll see if we're gonna push the envelope and. Hopefully you guys think we're conservative with our guys as it relates to throwing or playing. I mean, health first, and, and then we'll push the envelope second. And, you know, you got a guy like Jared Dickey in my ear all game long and all day long. The, the beast has been in the cage too long. He wants to play. Well, we, we got to be – we got to kind of manage situations like that. With that, what was your conversation with Charlie, kind of your expectations for him today, and then – if something were to happen, who, who would be the emergency catcher, third, fourth, or well, whatever? Well, Dickie can, Dickie can do things. Like I said, we're kind of being conservative in that situation, but there wasn't a conversation with Chuck. And I, I don't say that in an abrasive fashion, but th there doesn't need to be one. It kind of falls back on the opening statement. Um, I guess Ben Joyce would be the pitcher version of that. Just when you get to work, you're going to be lucky if you beat him. And then if you're going to take your time getting home, you're probably going to bump into him in the parking lot or see that his car is still there. And then Charlie, in similar fashion, I mean, he's a catcher that, you know, the grind is there. So so maybe he he leaves a little earlier than Ben sometimes, but it's kind of the same version. And, you know, you feel good about resting your head on the pillow when you got a guy like Redmond Walsh, um, Ben Joyce, Charlie Taylor. You, you want good kids that work hard. They're good teammates to put the team ahead of themselves. And this time of year, anything can happen. I mean, that was a wild first game. And we very easily could have had something flip there. Or maybe if Breon's completely fresh, maybe we lose this game. So you got to be ready for anything this time of year, but even in February. Um, and I'm good with that. Uh, but what, what I worry about every day is I want a group of guys out there representing our team uh, in a way that you feel good about it. They're prepared. And if it doesn't go well, you can go home and you can still sleep well at night. Mike and Ryan. Yeah, Tony, when did you kind of find out that Evan wouldn't be available and you had a chance to kind of talk with him throughout the day at all? Uh, a little bit via text, but mainly this morning. Mainly this morning. Charlie, just Tony kind of talked about there in his intro, but you got some uh, hearty standing ovations or a round of applause when you came up the bat after a few of your bats. Just kind of what did that mean to you and how did you have to keep your emotions in check in those moments? Uh, that, was, that was pretty awesome. I was honestly a little bit nervous, but the way that uh, – Blade through the ball and the way that Vol Nation kind of rallied around me, I probably won't ever forget that. So that was a pretty cool, pretty cool moment for me. 
Troy. When you ever celebrate a squeeze bun to this. More more of a safety, but um, no, I mean, you just felt good about something, especially uh, the way our guys kind of set the table. But no, uh, you're you're supposed to, I guess, be even keeled. But I think uh, my track record speaks volumes that I'm I'm not very good at that. But it it, it was a time to celebrate within the game, even though the game was still in balance. And um, it's it's awesome to see guys get rewarded. Uh, the way that they should. I, I question many a days, when are my rewards coming as a player? Uh, because I felt like I invested like these two kids did, and it never did because uh, I'm not as skilled as them. But I think where it, it happened was when I got invited to Knoxville. So me and Chuck are on the same page. That's why I was cheering for him. Carthick and Wes. Hey, Charlie, this is another question for you. How do you feel like all those midweek, uh, midweek games where you started, you know, helped you prepare for a moment like this in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, we – Kind of in some of those midweek games, you can look up and there's five, 6,000 people in the stands. So, I mean, the the crowds that we saw in the midweeks uh, kind of got me ready for, for a moment like that. But also, I think if you look around the field at every position, uh, there's guys that are kind of sitting in the background for now or for this season that are, are really capable players. And I think that speaks volumes to, like V was talking, we just got a lot of hard workers in this building. So, um I think there's a lot of guys that are that are ready for their shot. Blaine, I don't know that, that you've been. Question. You, I don't know that you, you obviously haven't thrown that many pitches this year. I mean, did you? Everybody said that you were ready to go that many or that many innings. Did you feel like going into this game that you really were good to, to go that much? I, I really did. Uh, I've had some 70, 80 pitch outings this year, and uh, going into today, I thought I could go more, and uh, I honestly wasn't tired after that outing which was weird I mean usually I get tired I'm human but I, I just felt good after the outing so yeah I was ready working with Charlie I know that you, a couple midweek games this, this year you, you've thrown with him I mean any change there with, with it not being Evan back there uh I mean he kind of picked up where, where Russ left off uh Chuck catches my bullpens during the week so I mean he's done a great job and like V said he, he's a real hard worker so I had, I had no problem with Chuck catching tonight what was working so well for you and what was so effective today? I think getting ahead in the count really helped me out today. I hadn't been doing that much this year. And uh, getting ahead in the count's huge. And I could throw all my pitches. And when you get ahead, usually your secondary pitches are better too. So they were they were all kind of working for me. Wes? Charlie, I know it's not the, the largest sample size, but you know when you look at batting averages, obviously you see what the number is. How, how have you kind of kept your head up through some of that this year? And is that just baseball sometimes, or have you kept confidence? Through all yeah, this? a little bit. But uh, Coach Elander always says that, you know, if you're going to catch here, your your three main jobs are catch it, keep it in front, control the running game in that order, and then anything on top of that is kind of a bonus. And obviously, I'd like to see that average go up a little bit. But I think my first priority is worrying about taking care of this pitching staff, and then the offense will come. I'm good with it. It's Brian Urlacher's number. He's a pretty dang good player. <laughs> Fell short on a Super Bowl that people around here probably watched <laughs> against the Colts. Ben then Ryan. Tony, did you get a chance to watch the first game, uh, Campbell, and, and see what they did and just your thoughts on, on this, scouting them all week and then watching them play earlier today? Yeah, I, I kind of did. Uh, I wasn't as organized as, as I would have liked to have been. And, and you got to pick, do you, you kind of want to watch on TV or do you want to watch from the office? And so it, it was bits and pieces, but but we've seen both those teams play just on TV if you're a fan of college baseball because um, Georgia Tech plays like opponents being close to us. And then a lot of those kids you see at Lake Point, I mean, you can only have so many guys on a roster. A lot of those guys we're familiar with and would like to have them here. Um, and, and then Campbell's had a strong program for the last few years, and we've tried to sync up with them to play too. It just it, That stuff's harder than you think scheduling-wise. Um, so, so there's some familiarity there sprinkled in with watching a few of the plays and it was, it was what you expected. You've got a few first rounders in, involved in that game, if not potentially more, and it was explosive. Um, and, and both teams really didn't want to quit till the end as it got closer towards the seventh and eighth and ninth, I didn't get to watch, but you kind of knew this thing's not going to end soon. Uh, there's going to be some blows back and forth and. Um, again, I, I think you're wasting your time if you watch those brackets and say, well, what about this? You're going to have four good teams 
and everyone's going to throw their best first punch on, on day one. And then after that, crazy stuff's going to happen. And you just need to make sure you take care of what you have going on in your clubhouse and your dugout. And uh, obviously, you hope to be the team that wins on any given day. Tommy, I believe Blaine just had two, three ball accounts. Just how much does that change his potential? Yeah, we, we argued about it in the hallway, actually. We'll keep that between us. But I, I, I'm just, you, you know, in Florida, I won there and when he got to start and kind of really, truly be back out there in his element and start and, and give us a quality start. He went midway through the game and pitched against a phenomenal team, you know, an SEC team. Uh, so I still, because was depraved a little bit, I just like seeing him out there. I just really do. Um, and, and then the fact that he's kind of returned to the Blade Tidwell that, you know, everyone's kind of antsy, the fans and whatnot. I want to see that. But to me, I think you got a m more mature guy. It, it doesn't guarantee you that he's going to do what he did here with three hits over seven and two thirds. Like the stats are great, but baseball coaches or fans can see with their own eyes. The guy's matured. Um, and that's good because in this game, I know he probably wants to play it till he's about 35. You have to keep progressing in certain areas. And um, for some of these, you know, Ben Joy's fastball is not going to progress. So you have to progress continually in different areas. And it's nice that a guy that had success last year did not rest on it. He's, he's made progress and matured in some areas. We'll go to Tim in the back. Is, uh, is Evan in any kind of like COVID protocol? And if no. Not, can we expect him back no. next weekend? Yeah, and, and don't – that I don't know. I want to – like I said, I'd like to rather hook up with – I pushed all that stuff onto Doc Clink and those guys. But um, no – don't I've I said that word to ask questions what's protocol and all that stuff and obviously th that deal's real it hasn't gone away so it could be a part of the NCAA tournament fortunately I don't think we'd have anything like we had in the final but um not not one of those deals so we'll let we'll let so those still not sure on next week at this point oh we we got we're guaranteed two more games so well I mean like if you make it the next week we're not sure if Evan would be back with you I don't we, we got a game tomorrow, and if we lose, then they'll play us in the morning, and if we win, we'll play at night. So um, that's why a guy like Burnsy will be down in the pen. I know I got asked, I think, of the Kentucky game, who's going to start tomorrow if Burnsy's in the game now? At that point, Kentucky <laughs> was uh, one of the hotter swinging teams in, in the whole nation So and playing for their lives. So um, next step is for me to eat a meal and then get, try to get sleep and then wake up in the morning and then the next baseball step is to have a good pregame to prepare for Campbell. Mike. Charlie, when was the last time you've gone back-to-back -back games? Again, how do you prepare mentally and, and physically to go through the rest of this weekend? Um, I guess it's been since high school, but, I mean, I, we have a lot of resources here that, that – uh, and Woody and all those guys do a great job at keeping us on top of our recovery, Beth, our nutritionist. So uh, I think just hydration, rest, and – Recovery is the main thing here, and kind of just come out and play our brand of baseball tomorrow. Tony lost in the fold today. Is the announcement earlier about the expansion of Lindsey Nelson Stadium? Just how excited are you for that? Uh, tremendously. For for me, it's it's been kind of a step by step, and hey, what do you think about this? And we'll come back to the engineers with this, and so it, it's been active, and the excitement has kind of stayed at a, at a level. I, I just really you know, applaud the administration and then just the idea of let's work hard on this. So maybe if we're able to, you know, get it out on a day like today, I think the timing is perfect. And then, you know, phone blows up. I think everyone's very impressed. You know, it's hard to, you know, get into the exact details right now of what's, you know, what's this row going to be called or what's, but just to see the grand scale of it lets people know how serious everyone around here is in investing in baseball. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think a lot of can, Continued excitement is kind of what I've had, but you could see it in my text messages. Alums and VFLs and people that take a lot of pride in the program are excited. Again, I think the scale of the whole deal is is what's been talked about. Yes. Oh, not my Matt, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Danny White said that a big reason that you wanted this expansion was to keep the fans close to the field, that they make a huge impact out there. Huge impact tonight as well, packed house. Just how much did that play a factor with the fan base? It does. I mean, it affects the other team in a certain fashion. You can't deny that. It's like when we go to Starkville, we experienced it ourselves. And then even in Hoover, we had games where there's back and forth between fans. Um, I think the intimacy that you're bringing up, too, has a, a deeper value for us. It's that relationship 
that the fans have with our players. I mean, yeah, we got some great personalities, but there's been something weird going on since we've been here where it's just the fans recognize our kids and they have relationships with them. And I've been at other great places and places where you got arguably the, the they'll say the best fans in the country, which is, is fair to say, but I've never seen kind of a connection uh, there and relationships build off of people that are there. And I think a big part of it is how, how close they are. Um, obviously it's other characteristics of our fans. And again, we've got some good kids and personalities, but that's a part of it and not something we want to lose because something gets a little fancier. Can I, this one's for you. A few moments ago, Tony touched on it, but after a successful freshman year and then having battled through adversity at this point, do you feel like you've returned to form? I would say I've returned to form. Uh, I've been feeling like that. I know the results haven't been what I wanted, uh, but I've always had that confidence this year in my stuff, and uh, it's nice to see it uh, pan out on the field. Uh, just what Blake Burke has shown you in his freshman season, how, how, how excited must you be as a head coach to just watch him keep growing even further? I mean, it's two homers away from breaking the single season record by a freshman. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know all that stuff, but just batting practice today was a, a little weird. I mean, the rest of our guys swung it really well. I think Jordan Beck probably swung it just as good as Burke. Um, but it was kind of like a freak show. And uh, it, it's just nice that he's kind of settled into – you know, just playing. Cause at first you just see freshmen so geared up and, um, you know, and it, it needed to come from, from me. The other coaches are saying, this guy's got to be in the lineup. We've got, like Chuck said, we got a good group. We've got depth. So, you know, once he got that rep, the amount of repetitions, you see him calm down and just play. It, it's pretty special. And, and you get forward thinking of like, he's only a freshman. There's two more years to go. That's, that's pretty nice. But again, as I kind of answered questions earlier, it's, it's hard for me to do. I suck at it. I will admit, but you got to stay grounded. And and tomorrow he just needs to play like himself, not a freshman, not a junior, not a sophomore. But it's it's a pretty special swing, really special swing. Any other questions? Do I enter tomorrow? Yes. Yes. There you go. On that. Thank note. you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate, appreciate, you. appreciate y'all. Yeah.